Welcome to 5.5. Five. Um, we're going to learn this new distribution called the binomial distribution. Um, distribution, remember, means shape. Um, it tells us like the pattern of the data. Uh, but we're going to do some new definitions and calculator stuff before we get in there. Um, so we're going to do this new function called um, combinations. We read this as n choose x. Notice it's not a fraction. Um, there's no fraction bar. It has n over x. It basically, in a weird way, tells me how many groups I can make. Um, we don't need to know the function, but if you ever have seen it in another class, it looks like these things called factorials. Uh, but don't worry, we're not going to do this, but just in case you've seen it. It's n factorial over k factorial and n minus k factorial. Um, factorials, just to learn something new, like 4 factorial means 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. It's like this multiplication process, um, if you're curious. But again, we'll let the calculator do it for us. So it's going to tell us groups. So it's the number of ways um, of choosing x objects from a set of n objects. So the first one that says 8 choose 3 is how many, basically, groups of 3 we can make out of 8. And so this will be really important. I don't know if you remember um, in earlier sections, we were kind of doing probabilities that could happen more than one way. So it's going to help us with that when we get there. Um, but let's just figure out how it works on the calculator. So if you have your calculator, um, you're going to go ahead and type 8. No, why does it do that? So type 8. Come on. Okay, now I'm struggling. Sorry. Okay, we're going to type the number 8. You're going to hit math. So write this menu down just so you know where it is. The math button, you're going to go over to PRB. So hit the arrows. It'll either say PRB or PROB, depending on your calculator. And then you'll see the one that says NCR. So you'll hit the arrows to go down to NCR. And that's basically it. So... Um, depending on your calculator, um, I'll show this on the computer because I have the other one. I'll show this in a separate video. Um, some of your calculators look like this one. Other calculators look like this. They're not in subscripts or whatever. It'll just say 8 and CR 3. So I wrote that out by hand. Um, or some of you will look like this. Either or hit enter and you should get 56. So basically, there's 56 different groups of three people we can make. So let's try the next one. So hit 8, math, PRB, NCR, and 5. I'm doing the one on the right. So I'm going to write it how it might look on most calculators. Um, or yours looks like mine, and you can just see that. And you hit enter, and you actually get 56 again. And the reason is, is 3 plus 5 is 8. So if I make groups of three, then I'm technically making groups of five by excluding those five people. And so that's why groups of three and five are the same. Um, let's try a couple more. Um, five, math, PRB, and CR. Oops, the bigger number comes first. And there's a ton of options. Um, what is this? 2 million, 598, 960. It's huge. These numbers get big. Because um, there's actually like five people in a group. There's so many combinations because you can have four the same and you can just change one person, right? And then you can have three the same and then just change two. And there's just, I mean, there's millions of possibilities. Um, let's try. So if you're getting sick of going to the menus, you can hit second enter and just type over. Save some time. So 51 choose 6, we actually now have 18 million, 9,460. So just a calculator function now. And then 100 choose 12. So we're going to make groups of 12 out of 100 people. So second enter is nice. Or just do the menus again. Um, and then this 
is not one. So I'm, I mainly did this example so we learn the calculator a little bit. Um, that e to the 15 is actually telling me this number is too big for the calculator. So it really means, that's scientific notation, it means move the decimal 15 times. So it'll be 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. A huge number. I don't even know what that is. Uh, millions, billions, trillions. I think it's called quadrillions. Doesn't matter. It's huge. Um, so make sure sometimes you get these numbers. You've probably seen it with probability as well, um, where they're maybe really small. Um, so it's just numbers that are really big or really small the calculator doesn't want to display. So a few more definitions before we can get into why we need this. So we're going to look at these things called Bernoulli trials. Um, and there's some rules to fit this pattern. Um, so there needs to only be two outcomes. So we're going to do these special probability cases where there's only two outcomes. So rolling a dice no longer works because there's six outcomes. But anything with two possible outcomes will work. And we'll call one a success and one a failure. Um, the trials need to be independent. And the main reason they need to be independent is we want the probability of success to remain the same from trial to trial. So this is, I think we did free throws a couple videos back. Uh, and the probability remained the same. And so we'll call probability of a success P and probability of a failure Q. Um, so the free throw example we did would work. Uh, that was in 5-4. It was make versus miss. Um, an easy example to think of is flipping a coin, heads or tails. Flipping a coin. So that's what I mean. One, two options. Um, roulette didn't quite work, right? Because we had red, green, or black, but we can also make some alterations there, but we'll come back to that. But the main idea is there's only two possible outcomes and the probability stays the same. So I'm gonna alter roulette to make it um, Bernoulli. Um, and so if we're betting on red, um, red is our success. And so the probability of a success would be 18 out of 38, there's 38 total if we don't remember. And then the reason I can make this Bernoulli is because technically since black and green are both failing, I can just group them together as a failure. And so the probability of that would actually be 20 out of 38. So basically we're doing red versus not red. Because I'm really not interested in black or green, I'm just, I just care that it's not red, right? Because I've lost. So if I want to play five times, what's the probability that I win three times? This is where it gets tricky. So technically, right, we already learned this. We want to win, win. So winning would be 18 out of 38. Winning would be 18 out of 38. Winning would be 18 out of 38. Right, so that's three wins. One, two, three. So then we'd have to lose two of them. So then 20 out of 38 times 20 out of 38 back at, like we did in um, previous sections, right? We could just multiply because we would win and then we'd win and then we'd win and then we'd lose and then we'd lose. The problem is, is there's so many different ways this can happen. So this is not the solution. We still have to find the number of ways. So there's going to be times some number out front. And that number out front is telling me how many different ways this can happen. And so... There's lots of ways to win, right? You could win the first three. You could win the first two and then the fourth, right? You could win. I wrote it out because it gets really tedious. But you can see all the different combinations of winning three times and losing twice. So to save the trouble, I did it for you. So the probability we calculated above was only the first option. And so then I'd have to calculate it again and again and again. But you might notice we're multiplying the same numbers no matter what. So we can just find the number of ways. So the probability ends up being 10 times all this because there's 10 ways to do this. 
but obviously we're not going to list them out and that's why we came up with that new calculator function it's going to calculate it for us so the way we find these 10 possibilities is we actually use that choose function so since we're doing doing five total and then we want three wins it's how many ways of three out of five basically and if you don't believe me, go ahead and see if you get 10 on the calculator. So we'll do five, choose three. Yep, and we get 10. And that'll lead us to the formula, which I think I'll save for the next video because we'll actually use the video in the next video. Use the formula in the next video, so. But this was just kind of deriving the concepts and then we can jump into a formula. So see you back.